There were two plans prepared before the creation of the earth. One came under Lucifer, and one came under Christ. Lucifer was the morning, the son of the first morning. He was the firstborn. Jesus, as Christ, was the secondborn. When they decided upon the creation of the earth and what would happen, Lucifer set up evolution. And that people would not have choices, they would just evolve through states of being up through, genetically up to this state. All of these encompass the idea of reincarnation. You re-embody back into you complete, you have perfected what you're here to do. In his there was no choice. His plan was given. He got his first plan. He got it. He came in onto the earth. This is before the earth, as we know, in Genesis was created. When they said, when they said it, was, uh, it was void without form, it was in a state of chaos, change. In Jeremiah, if you listen back to it, it'll talk to you about the time when in the old creation, the people were having a council on high, and they talked about the earth then and the way it was going to happen and how it was going to be destroyed because of the wickedness and illness because there was nothing to make the person breed out the genetics. Moses came in as picking up some of those who had the bad genetics, took them out in the desert, and rechanged the genetic pattern on them so they became the children of God instead of just the children of light. Moses came over here under this. So the Christ pattern was set in motion, and when it was set in motion, Lucifer said, you didn't give mine, mine a chance. And, and the father of light said, you did, and now we're giving this one a chance. This is the second plan. There was a first plan and a last plan. Not necessarily a second and a third and a fourth. For the particular evolution of all the souls into these particular patterns of incarnation. It's about 15 billion years long. Now, you know, that's like saying, it's like drops of salt in the ocean. I, nobody can figure out what that is. So you just drop that as like, okay, that's information. In this pattern, there were going to be high points where people would incarnate onto the planet. And on these incarnations, these would be pinnacles of light where they would once again lift the consciousness back into God instead of the involvement through their own process. When Jesus came in, which let's just call it down here at some point, It was, it was Jesus, the anointed one, because Christ is really Messiah, Mashiach, Yeshua, Yeshua, Mashiach, the, the anointed one. And anointed mean, just meant that the prophetic energy and the Christ line was passed on into him. Since he got it, he matured it and took it across into the hells over here, where these were the hells under Lucifer or Satan. And he came across at the time of that. This was planned. This was a plan. This is why Satan fights the hell out of it, because he says, you're going to screw up my plan. His plan's screwed up. It's screwed up. That's all there is to it. So what we have now are people on the evolutionary plan and people who are on the grace plan. On this one, it is not by our works, by our righteousness, but by God extending Christ down to all of us as a consciousness of love and light. And in that, there had to be someone to bridge across into the other realm of, of life that we call the Luciferian life. That's not a bad life. It's just one that where the plan didn't work out too well. In that, we have the satyrs. In this, we have the half peoples. In this, we have the mixed breeds. All, of that, all these are over here. Edgar Cayce talked a lot about this. He just didn't differentiate it real clearly. So Jesus came in and said, I'll bridge across. Now, Lucifer has access to God and walks the high heavens. As in Job, he's described doing that. And Job is a state of consciousness of how people will evolve, not about a man living in a country who have these particular things, because it's quite obvious that if God killed off all of his children and his wife and his family and then forgave him and then restored his wife and his children and his family, that means Job is stupid to think that that's going to take the place of the first ones. So it's obvious it's a metaphor of life and not just those particular people. When he, when he came onto the cross, he was really saying, there is a choice. The choice is the Father's way, or there is the choice of the willfulness of Lucifer. And Jesus said, if I enter into the choice of the Christ and the choice of God, someone must go across 
and bridge the creation. And he said, I'll do it when he was up here in the first estate in the spirit world. He says, I'll do it. When he got down here, flesh and blood felt really weak. And, and I think all of us can say, oh, yeah, man, Jesus, you know, don't go do that. But you got to go do that. But don't go do that. But you got to go do that. But, and so we're all placed in the dilemma of choosing against ourselves, but choosing for the higher part. So Jesus' enemy wept and cried and said, take it from me if you can. Jesus embraced that one as, as the dialogue in the Garden of Gethsemane, which makes you wonder how people wrote it down because they're all asleep anyway. <laughs> but maybe somebody got it clairvoyantly and looked back to the Akashic Records and says, here's what went on. I'm not going to take that away from him. I just have my questions about it. They're not negative questions. They're very critical, though. So at this particular time, he entered upon a crucifixion which was to deny himself, the ego personality, and bridge across. At that point, he went into the hells, and at that point, no one could evolve into the Spirit of God except to Lucifer, and they couldn't do that because he had him prison, a prisoner was waiting for a new pattern of life, and he'd issue all of these third of the souls of heaven back onto a planet, and he would then be God over them, which is what he wanted. Uh, Christ said, no, God is God. Lucifer, you're my elder brother. And there was a fight and there was a rebellion. He was cast down. But his casting down wasn't a turning away as much as it was, now you go do it. Christ was not cast down. He actually, um, I think it's called a form of hypostasis. He actually uh, advented himself into the form. And on adventing himself, it's like he birthed himself. He impregnated himself, got pregnant himself, bodied himself, birthed himself, and lived himself, and then died himself, and resurrected himself through a power of transcendence, which is another word for God. At the point he did that, all the things that at that particular point were being recorded as an evolutionary form got switched over unto the grace form. All the sins were then forgiven. A new method of bookkeeping. All these things, oh, you can't bring them over here. They got to stay there. They're forgotten. Come over here. You're clean. Not only are you clean here, we don't keep books down the future for you, so you even clean down the future. You go, what a deal. Christ, my man for eternity. Yeah, what a deal. <laughs> Lucifer, <laughs> you have me bound to your thoughts and your feelings. Yeah, I love you. You're a bright morning sun. You're the firstborn and all that. But this is how that came about. Now, that's a metaphysical term for it. I gave you the metaphysics of it. But I have no proof for you. Like that light's on, that light's on, and this is a black widget. It's a marker. Nevertheless, that's, that's the way I have the information, the way I understand it. It's real clean and clear inside of me. I know that he's part of the mystical traveler consciousness energy, which always, which is quite amazing, that mystical traveler consciousness energy goes just like this. Christ come down through this level, Lucifer came down through this level, and the mystical traveler embraces all the whole thing. So therefore, we can't sit here and cuss this one. Nor can we sit here and cuss this one. We just say, while you're here, you're doing this. While you're here, you're doing this. And so it becomes practical spirituality. It's a functional reality. How are you going to function with this? What are you going to do with this? So now whether you want to accept that Jesus did anything for your sins, he didn't do anything for your karma. That's part of this plan. And it's called being a, being a responsible creator and learn to be a co-creator with Christ, which is what Paul said when he said, let the mind that is in Christ Jesus be in you, which means there it is. It's readily available. You can have it. How do you get it? Ask. Jesus said, you receive not because you ask not. So ask in my name. So if I want the name of the highest, I just say Jesus Christ and got it. Forget that. Everything else flows from it. And then I don't have to lay out a plan. Okay, Jesus, here's how we're going to get that guy. Or here's how we're going to get that job. So we do it instead of using the name Jesus Christ. We say, for the highest good of all concern. And we've wrapped up the whole thing. So what do we got? We've got a real fail-safe margin working here. What do we do? We can live in this and embrace the enemy. We can bridge them across and have a complete wholeness. And the Holy Spirit then resides in all of us. And Christ becomes that messenger of redemption and salvation, how we go into the heavens. The traveler becomes that transport mechanism by which the Christ and them perform it. Thank you, Terry. Sure. I love you. Thank you.